Right now, we are very happy for some live music in our studio. We want to welcome Kimbra. If you're ready for a couple of songs, that'd be wonderful. This is a song called Two Way Street. One, two, three, four. I feel the four become five. And I'm waiting, waiting, waiting For you to walk down the boulevard And to take me, take me, take me But the moment you appear You wake me, wake me, wake me Out of the slumbers of my head From the slums of loneliness There's no conspiracy Behind the way to hurt me When love is a two-way street oh, oh. I think I'm ready To let you get under my skin I can't make you fall for me oh. We're coming close to our friends They'll put a star beside our name but I couldn't care for the history When I've got you in front of me Aye! But the cars could all collide Shots of glass will catch my eye Cause you're almost by my side We're counting down at the green line And there's no conspiracy Behind the way to hide me This next song is called uh, Withdraw. Oh, oh, oh. 
is fire or that yearning of my heart shaped hole on hold for you. See, Lord, I've never learned to hold on. I hold too tight, then I have to let go. But there's no life, there's no life, there's nothing to take your place. I can't spend a minute now. I can't steal all the time I've lost all my friends like they were money and I lost all my men and my men to the sky no I, I can't keep you loving from my morning cause it's So stuck, stuck to your side. Withdraw your heart from mine. You're the one thing that sticks. Right, very nice. You're listening to live music here at KEXP from Kimbra, performing tonight along with uh, Step Kids. That's happening at the Showbox at the Market. And if uh, by chance you're in the Portland area tomorrow night, they'll be performing at the Wonder Ballroom. Again, thanks for being here this afternoon. Welcome back to Seattle. You were performing here just a couple months ago on the tour with Foster the People. Yeah, that's right. And now you're back headlining and uh, just performing all over the place in the U.S. this year, which was the plan a bit this year. And you've been everywhere, Coachella and Saturday Night Live. So can you sum up the the U.S. experience? Has it gone pretty much as you hoped it would? Yeah, we, we love touring the U.S. It's been great. Um, obviously, we were lucky to support Gautier on his tour and then foster the people, but it's pretty iconic to be doing our own tour now. I think, you know, that's the moment you wait for. Um, and, yeah, you know, we've got a pretty exciting visual show and um, lots of, you know, some new songs to play as well, which is great. Yeah. The uh, album uh, came out last year in Australia and your home in uh, New Zealand, Vows, and then it was released this year here in the U.S. through Warner Brothers. So, uh, so the, are the songs on here, the performances in the U.S., are they pretty much the arrangements when the album originally came out, or have you, uh, you know, sort of uh, played around with them a little bit since the original recordings? Yeah, um, it's pretty integral to our live show is to evolve the songs a lot. Um, in fact, a lot of the songs on Vows, you know, I wrote when I was 16 or 17, and um, I get kind of bored of them, so <laughs> we like to mix them up and um, try different versions, kind of like what we're doing today, and uh, yeah, it just keeps it fun for everyone, I keeps think. Keeps it a little bit fresh. Yeah. You purposely, as a young performer, took a lot of time to make the first album. Is that something you could try to do on the second album when that comes about, or is it going to be a bit hard to do that? I'm kind of interested in taking a more spontaneous approach for the second record. Um, it feels like the debut, you only get one shot to sort of make your impression, and I wanted to make sure that I did it um, right and, you know, got to explore every sort of, um, d you know, different genre that I wanted to play with. Uh, but for the second album, you know, I, I think it'll be a different process. We'll see, though. Who okay. knows? <laughs> um, we mentioned Foster the People, and on the U.S. release, there's a bonus song, Warrior, which you co-wrote uh, with Mark Foster. Yeah. And I heard that 
writing that song. You didn't meet to write that song. That was all online and using technology yeah, today to, to do crazy. that? That's correct. We um, also had A-Track involved with that song. Um, and, you know, he wrote the beat and he was in Paris at the time. Mark was in L.A. I was in Germany. And we were all sending the song back and forth, you know, over the Internet. And I actually laid down the vocal tech that you hear on that song in the airport of Hamburg. Um, <laughs> and Mark thought it had a real vibe to it. And so we ended up using that one on the um, album. So, yeah, I guess that just shows 21st century, you know, this, these things are possible. <laughs> yeah. You mentioned visuals, um, the artwork, the visuals, the videos. Yeah. Is that all conscious when you're originally writing the songs? Yeah, I think I definitely um, think about the, the visual element when I write. Um, it's testimony to a producer I worked with in Melbourne who did a lot of soundtrack f- soundtracks for horror films, actually, and he taught me to kind of be quite cinematic with the way I write and think about, you know, the, um, the introduction, the tension, the climax and the resolve and actually involving all of that stuff in, in a song. And it makes the process of making a music video quite straightforward because it's all sort of mapped out in my head early on. Um, and similarly, in the live show, we like to create a bit of a world around the, the songs so people feel like they're having a bit more of a experience on the night. You lead me right into the next thing I was going to ask when you talked about films. There's a new release yesterday, the film, uh, Tim Burton's new one, Frankenweenie. Yeah. I like saying that on the air. <laughs> and uh, good word. And uh, anyway, you've got a uh, song on that. There's a soundtrack, and then there's this other accompanying disc, Music From and Inspired by the film from Tim Burton. And you've got a, uh, a song on here. So right, uh, yeah. how did that come about? Yeah, well, I guess um, for this film, Tim Burton wanted to do a, sound, a soundtrack CD, which was, yeah, you know, different artists writing and responding to the trailer that they saw for Frank and Weenie. It was such a fun process. I'm a huge fan of Tim Burton. And we all got to sort of see the breakdown of the film and a few, you know, details about the characters and write a song based on what we felt from that. And uh pulled it together in the back of a tour bus over, I think, yeah, four weeks or something, five weeks. So it was, a, it was a rush, but I'm really pleased with the song and obviously some amazing artists on that um, on that soundtrack CD as well. Mark Foster's on here and Passion Pit and a lot of other great people. Yeah. So that just was released yesterday. Um, you're going to continue to tour the U.S. for quite a while here through the end of the year and then go back home. What kind of plans do you have after going home? Are you then thinking about uh, recording another album at that point? Yeah, I've already started um, sketching stuff out for the second album, so it'll be about finding some stability again to to do that. Um, We're playing a lot of summer festivals back in Australia and New Zealand, so it keeps going for a little while yet. Because it'll be summer there. Exactly. We just follow the sun. It's actually kind of nice. (laughs) That's that's cool to do. Mm. Now, you're from New Zealand. You live in Australia when you're at home. And, um, you know, when I watch some global sports, let's say, with some of my friends that I do with. I noticed that oh, when I'm watching sports that have to do with Australians, New Zealands, mm-hmm. there's just this, I don't know how to explain it, this little sort of extra com, uh, you know, competitive edge. <laughs> and I was wondering if that carries over a little bit into music. Mm, that's interesting. I don't know. Do you guys... I don't feel like I've noticed that <laughs> so much. I feel like we're all pretty supportive of each other. You know, the rivalry between Australia and New Zealand, it's very, you know, friendly. And I think within sport, they like to kind of, you know, um, I was play kind it of speak- up a bit I was more, kind of but- speaking when they're playing people away from Australia and yeah, okay, New Zealand. Yeah, right. Interesting. Yeah, no, I haven't really noticed that myself within our realm. But um, Okay. Yeah. I just wondered if that was because, you know, where in the, you know, in the globe where you're located is far away from Europe, is far away from America and just sort of have to, you know, come up with a little something extra to, to take notice. Yeah, that's true. A couple of the I guys think... are shaking their heads. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I like that element of, you know, being so far away. It almost, in some ways, makes you kind of work a little bit harder to come up with something, you know, branded yeah. with your own sound so that you, like I said, you can break into these markets and have something different to say, you know. Yeah. All right. The uh, album is Vows from Kimbra tonight at the Showbox at the Market with the Step Kids, and you've got one more song for us. Yeah, we're going to play you a song um, that Nina Simone once sung. It's called Plain Gold Ring.
on his finger he wore Oh, 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 oh It was when everyone could see Oh, 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 oh He belonged to someone Thank you, and thank you guys for being here, performing tonight at the Showbox at the Market with the Step Kids. It's 90.3 KEXP here in Seattle.